This is going to be a study on the subject of pre, post, and amillennialism. If you are a Bible believer, then you have to be pre-millennial. What this means is that you believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back before the millennium. Turn to Revelation chapter 20 and look at verses 1 through 7. And notice how many times it says 1,000 years. Okay, Revelation 20 and verse 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones... And they set up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and when the thousand years are expired satan shall be loosed out of his prison so there's definitely a time that's a thousand years and it goes like this we're in the church age we're going out in a rapture before the seven year tribulation after the tribulation, Jesus Christ comes back and the millennium starts. The 1,000 year millennium. The millennial kingdom. And the one who brings in this kingdom is Jesus Christ himself. In the previous chapter, Revelation 19, you read where he comes back with his saints to take over. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16, it says, And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this happens before the thousand years. So to reject the fact that Jesus comes back to bring in his kingdom is to reject the Bible. You saw in Revelation 19, Jesus coming back before the 1,000 years mentioned in Revelation chapter 20. And that's premillennialism. There are men who reject premillennialism and teach postmillennialism. And this means they believe we, the church, will bring in the kingdom ourselves. But the Bible doesn't teach this. It doesn't teach that things are getting better, but rather that they are getting worse and we need Jesus Christ to come and fix it all. Postmillennialists think we're going to do so good that we're going to bring in the kingdom ourselves. So let's look at some verses that will prove things are actually getting worse and not better. And therefore, we can't be bringing in any kingdom. We need Jesus Christ himself to come back and set it up. So go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13. In 2 Timothy 3.13 it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So if men get worse instead of better, obviously things aren't getting better. If the world gets worse instead of better, obviously we're not bringing in the kingdom. Ever heard stories your grandparents told you about? About how they didn't have to lock their doors. Or about how they could walk long distances by themselves as a young kid. Have you ever heard them tell you about being able to stay out all night and nothing bad ever happening? 
Uh, you didn't hear about sex trafficking back then. They didn't have 24-7 access to filth on the internet back then. Things are getting worse. They're not getting better. There is going to be a wicked man, the Antichrist, who will persecute Christians here pretty soon. This happens in the end times. And he isn't destroyed until Jesus comes back. In Second Thessalonians 2, eight, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And this fact obviously shows us that Jesus Christ comes back before there is any peace. If Jesus Christ comes back to slay the person that's evil, then that shows Jesus Christ is the one who's cleaning up everything and bringing in peace. A persecution is always going to be around until Jesus comes. Until then, there will be no peace. Second Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And then Matthew 16.24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So if the persecution... For God's people doesn't stop until Jesus comes back. Then there's not going to be a 1,000 years of peace without Jesus Christ. So premillennialism, which teaches that Jesus Christ comes back before the millennium, is the correct biblical view. And in Revelation 17.6, it talks about how Babylon will be drunken with the blood of the saints. This is in the end times, proving there is yet to be peace on earth. In Jude uh, verses 14 through 15, it talks about the Lord coming back with his saints to judge the ungodly. And if we are bringing in the kingdom ourselves, then why does Jesus Christ come back in judgment? Uh, Jesus gives a prophecy of the condition of the world during the end times. And he says in Matthew twenty four twelve, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So you can see that post-millennialism is a false doctrine. Postmillennialists teach that we are going to bring in the kingdom and things are going to get better and better and better. But the Bible teaches that things are going to get worse and worse. And men are going to have sin so ingrained in their character and their iniquity is going to make the love they have towards others wax colder and colder. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. <clears throat> there is going to be a falling away. And this is the opposite of things getting better. We will need Jesus Christ to come clean things up. The world will be relying on the man of sin to clean things up. But he only makes it worse. Second Timothy Four three through four says, "For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables." And this is speaking of the church. We can already see this happening today, where men don't want hard preaching or sound doctrine; they want feel-good sermons. They don't like the Bible anymore. They want new versions of the Bible. They don't like good music. They want contemporary. The church is getting worse as time goes on. Now watch what Paul says about the last days. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, Unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And all of these things describe the times we are living in. This doesn't sound like we are bringing in any kingdom. The scriptures make it clear that when Jesus Christ comes back, Things aren't going to be in good shape. Luke 17, 26 says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So when Jesus Christ comes back, 
the condition of the world is going to be as it was in the days of Noah. And the Bible says in Genesis, the earth was full of violence. Doesn't sound like peace. If Jesus Christ doesn't come back until the peace comes, then why is there violence? Jesus Christ comes back to bring in the peace because there is no peace without him who is the Prince of Peace. It was so wicked, Sodom, or the world was so wicked that God destroyed it with a flood. But this time he will destroy it with fire when he comes back the second time. Luke seventeen twenty eight. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Noah, or the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. So what was going on in Lot's days? Lot was in Sodom, and there were homosexuals everywhere. And there's probably going to be homosexuals running rampant in the time of Jacob's trouble in the last days. And Jesus Christ, he came the first time as to suffer for us on the cross. The second time he's coming back full of wrath as the line of the tribe of Judah. And only through him are we going to have peace on earth. Postmillennialists believe everything will get better and that we will be bringing in the kingdom ourselves. They think things are getting better and better right now. They believe similar to the transhumanists who believe they're going to make things better and better through technology. But man doesn't get better, he gets worse. In Matthew twenty four twelve, it tells us how Jesus Christ comes back immediately after the tribulation of those days. So he is coming back to an earth that had been in tribulation. If he does this, then that itself disproves post-millennialism. If he's coming back immediately after some tribulation took place, then that shows there wasn't peace. And there is another view. There's premillennialism, which we are, the Bible biblical view. There's postmillennialism, which we just covered is impossible because things are getting worse and not better. And then there's a third view called amillennialism. And this would be those who don't believe there will be a millennium. They believe all the prophecies about the kingdom are spiritually fulfilled right now in the church age. And they also believe the book of Revelation isn't literal. So they are all millennialists. No millennium. Just like the atheist says there is no God, the amillennial, amillennialists believe there is no millennium that's going to take place in the future. No 1,000 years. And just by reading the verses about the millennium, we can clearly see that we aren't in the millennium today. Number one, there is no peace right now, but there will be in the millennium. If you look at Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Then that Revelation 20 and verse 2 describes how Satan will be bound in a bottomless pit during the millennium. This isn't true right now because he is currently operating as the prince of the power of the air. According to the book of Ephesians, the spirit that now worketh in all the children of disobedience. If he's the prince of the power of the air right now, and he's working in all the children of disobedience, he's obviously not being bound right now. So this obviously isn't the millennium. Also in the millennium, the animals will go back to their original state like they were in the Garden of Eden. In Isaiah 11, 6 through 8, it says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, the young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weed child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. These things definitely aren't happening right now. If you put these animals next to each other, they will eat each other and eat you. Uh, there are also unclean spirits roaming the earth in the day we're living in. And this will not be going on in the millennium. 
Zechariah 13.2 says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. There's idols today. Why aren't they cut off if we're in the millennium? And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So the uh, the millennium obviously isn't being fulfilled through the church age. There are obviously unclean spirits attacking us today. And Paul talks about those who give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Also, the longevity comes back in the millennium. Remember how Adam lived up to be in his 900s? That longevity of life comes back in the millennium. And we are doing good to live past 70 and 80 years today. Isaiah 65, 20 says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. So post-millennialists believe Jesus Christ doesn't come back until after we have brought in the kingdom and the thousand years are finished. And the amillennialists believe there is no millennium. And the verses about it are fulfilled in the church age spiritually. But the correct biblical view is that, a, is that of a pre-millennial view. We are Bible believers and we believe Jesus Christ is coming back before the millennium. He is going to clean things up and bring in the peace. After he lays down the rules and gets rid of his enemies with a sharp two-edged sword. So to be a millennial, you clearly have to deny scripture. You have to deny scripture to be post-millennial. And another thing I forgot to mention, if the millennium is being fulfilled now, then why are we still witnessing to people and telling them how to be saved? The Bible says in Hebrews that all will know him from the least to the greatest. If everybody's going to know the Lord, and we're not supposed to go around saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, as the Bible says, then why are we witnessing? That's because we're not in the millennium yet. That verse is in Hebrews 8.11. It says, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So we're not even going to be witnessing in the millennium. People are going to see Jesus Christ. He's going to be the, the witness. I mean, if you can see him and you can see the no prints in his hands. I mean, people are going to look at him and they're going to know what happened. They're going to know it's all true, just like when Thomas saw him. But this has been a study on premillennialism, and I hope it's helped you understand the subject better.